Today we will be fine-tuning a GPT-3 model. To be able to fine-tune, you need a val labeled dataset. And to get a val labeled dataset, you can actually take the time and write it yourself. But we're going to employ GPT-3's help here. I built this quick little web app, which communicates with OpenAI's API and generates funny sentences about JavaScript. But it's not always funny. When we click Create Generate, GPT-3 sends us a sentence. JavaScript is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So as you see, it's not always very funny. JavaScript, it's like if you look at, look all the f JavaScript, it's like if you took all the fun out of coding and added hours of debugging. Okay, maybe that could be funny. Another one. JavaScript is so powerful, it can turn a normal person into a lazy programmer overnight. Okay, this is pretty cool. So what happens in the background is that I am always sending the same prompt. This one right here, write a funny statement about JavaScript. And it goes into our backend main.py file. And then when the GPT-3 responds, it comes back and displays on this quick little web app. And this funny button is going to allow us to label whichever ones we consider are funny. So for example, let's just generate one more. JavaScript has so many crazy quirks that it's like one giant stand-up routine. Fine, let's say this is funny. Then when we click funny, what's, I haven't clicked it yet, what's going to happen is this. It's going to communicate with the back end. So this button yes click event is going to register and it is going to send back the completion to the main.py file. And this main.py file is going to write it as a JSON L file over here. So as you see, we don't have it yet. So if I were to bring this here and click funny, see it has created the JSON L file with the prompt, write a funny statement about JavaScript and the completion. There we go. The reason why we're doing it this way is because of the, is because of the requirements that OpenAI have. Next, we'll look at the requirements for fine tuning. When you're in OpenAI's playground, just go to documentation and go to fine tuning. Here, as you can see, the data has to be in this format. I tried doing it with CSV, but I was not very successful. So that's why I made the JavaScript, the script.js file to return the object, which is the body, as a prompt and completion, the completion being the input that we have selected by clicking yes. And then when it comes to the main.py file, and we're creating a data.jsonl file and just dumping it into it with a line break in the end. This is how we're able to create this. Now, if you go back and generate another one and click funny, as you can see, another one has been added. Let's try another one. There we go. So this is how we are going to create our data set and then fine tune it. I would like to give a quick overview of how I generated, how I've written the HTML, Python file and the JavaScript file. If you watch my previous video on connecting to OpenAI's API, I went through some detailed explanations on how we can do this, but I did employ ChatGPT's help. I'll just quickly browse over it. And also the playground using text da Vinci by giving it modifications and getting it to rewrite both the JavaScript code and the Python code at times, such as here. In our HTML file, we have some styling for the button and the hover and active conditions of the button. And then we have a body divided into divs. All of this code was written by ChatGPT. In any case, we have the title and two buttons, a button to generate and button to click yes. I actually just later changed it to funny. It's okay though, it's class is yes button. Shouldn't make a difference. And in our JavaScript code, we are calling those two buttons, button.generate and button.yes. Yes just stands for yes, it is funny. And we're defining this data uh, without actually assigning anything to it. 
because it needs to be a global variable. We'll talk about this in a moment. And then when the generate button is clicked, an event is generated, and then an event is returned. I'm not sure exactly what this does, but it has something to do with the default operation of the browser, I believe. And then a console log, a button clicked is logged onto the console, and then a fetch request is made to the backend, the post request. And then this prompt is sent back by the funny statement about JavaScript. And then at this point, this post request receives it, assigns it to data, and then gets the data's input, and then sends it to GPT-3 using this code snippet. And then assigns it to response. Then we receive the response and we actually get the text element out of the response. And then we return it as a JSON response object as the input being the response. After that, the data is received by JavaScript and then a new paragraph element is going to be created. There's some styling. Inner text is assigned to data.input, which is the response, the completion from GPT-3. And then a target div is selected, which is right here underneath the button. After that, JavaScript inserts the return paragraph as the first child. This is how we are able to get the latest response on the top. And then when we think a response is funny, and we just click this funny button, which then triggers this event listener, this event listener gets the response which the GPT-3 has sent and then returns this stringified JSON as this in this format, prompt being the prompt that we're using and completion being the data that input. Okay. And then it comes to this post method over here. And then Python receives this from the request.json. It prints it so that we can see it. After that, it, it creates a file if it doesn't exist, or it opens it with, with the append method, and then it just adds the completion which we deemed funny. And in this way, we're going to be able to go through a bunch of prompts and select whichever ones are funny. Then we're going to have a data set which we can use to fine tune a GPT-3 model. At this point, all we have to do is just generate new sentences and click funny whenever we think it's actually funny. In the hopes that when we have enough of a data set, then we'll be able to fine-tune a model to be able to generate even funnier sentences. Usually, OpenAI recommends about 500. That would take too long. I'll try to create as many as possible. I just want to mention OpenAI's community forum. It's community.openai.com. Please go to it. it. you find a lot of useful people which are gladly giving you all the help that you need. <music>
the percentage signs is to access my OpenAI API key from the environments. So essentially, you just have to put your API key right here as a string in between quotation marks. And then the API is to actually give it commands, fine -tunes create dash t is the location of your data file data set file this is data.json.l because it is in the same directory echo hive directory that's why we don't have to put any additional slashes or anything like that you just need to direct it to the directory and then dash m we're going to use curie i actually use davinci as well i've tested this a few times DaVinci was just taking too long, even just with 20 lines of a data set. Curie is quick. And then Curie, so DaVinci is 175 billion parameter model. Curie is about a 15 billion. I already have them fine-tuned anyway. We're going to take a look because this even Curie takes 20, 30 minutes worth of time, depending on if there is a Q or not. And then dash dash suffix is to actually give it a name. So JS underscore funny that sentence generator. Let's just actually say two because I already have one train. And then all you have to do is then copy this, bring it here, paste. And then when you press go, it uploads your data file and it starts. It uploaded the file, created fine tune and then streaming events. It usually streams it. I've fine-tuned many times but unfortunately it disconnects and when we run this to follow the stream it doesn't let us for some reason i think this is a problem on open ai's end uh, but on the other hand there are other commands we can use like for example i don't know if you can see maybe i'll zoom in this one oh it actually ended let me actually find it okay i have to retype it so you say open ai dash api dash key this is going to retrieve my key. API fine tunes that list, if I'm not mistaken, should get me. Oh, okay, I made a mistake. See, it's a fine dash tunes. Okay, so if you click this, it's going to give me a list of all the fine tunes that is that I have already done and the ones that are ongoing. Let me see. So it starts right here, right? Created add. The fine tune model is null because it is not being created yet. It's, these are its training parameters. This is its ID that you can use to follow it, but this is not working yet. See, it says pending. When it's processed, when it's ready, it's going to turn into processed. This process is just for the training file, the data.jsnl, right? But if I scroll slightly, so this these were earlier version. See, it says status succeeded, processed. This was another one I started with Curie. See, it says funny sentence generator by Curie. I also did one by Da Vinci. Where is it? Da Vinci, this one. See, Da Vinci, funny sentence generator test. I was testing it. So all in all, I've trained two Da Vinci models, one Curie. Da Vinci took a long time. Curie was done pretty quickly in half an hour to, to one hour time. I, I wasn't keeping track exactly. Anyway, so let's go to OpenAI's playground. So. When we are in OpenAI's playground, actually, we can access our fine-tuned models. So here is the standard models. And then as you scroll down, you will actually start seeing your fine-tuned models. I have a lot of fine-tunes. So this one is the Curie model, the funny sentence generator. And at the very bottom are the two Da Vinci ones that I have fine-tuned. So let's just try one of them. You have to prompt it with what you have prompted during the training. Remember, in our JSON data.jsonl data said we were always saying write a funny statement about javascript this is the main idea behind fine tuning right anyway so we've selected it let's say with a temperature of 0 0.7 write a funny statement about javascript 256 tokens and if we click submit we're gonna get quite a lot very undefined is the least of your worries javascript where the only thing that's guaranteed is the unexpected javascript where java isn't the only thing that can make you crazy JavaScript, where coding can make you laugh, cry, and scream at the same time, and it's repeating itself. Honestly, these are much funnier than the ones we were getting. In my opinion, there's a, there's a scene improvement. Let's try it again. Because you can always count on it to make you laugh. Okay, that's why. That one's not so great. Because the language that doesn't always make sense can still help you make sense of things. Because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. All right. Let's try one more time. 
the where the only thing that gets instant gratification is the compiler okay that's where nothing is more important than instant gratification so it's repeating itself but then so let's try with maximum temperature i think you get better results like that also i realized did you notice how it's always starting with javascript so this i don't know the thing is that i didn't notice this until i started seeing it during the fine-tune process but Almost everything I selected as funny it starts with JavaScript. So I wasn't paying attention if all the generations had JavaScript or I only picked these ones that were funny. So obviously, its data set always had this JavaScript as a beginning. So now the fine tune is beginning like that. Anyway, these, some of these are pretty funny. I think there's a definite improvement in my opinion. So you'll be the judge of it. So we can use it in Playground. We can also use it in our little web app. So this is a neat thing in OpenAI's Playground. When you're working with it, you can actually press view code. And look, it actually gives you the code to be able to use this. And this is for Python. Here is, this is for node.js, okay? Curl and JSON. This is pretty awesome. So you can actually straight up copy this and paste it and get it working for you because this is going to return a response as long as, soon, as long as you have your API key. But the thing is that this is what we want. We want the model number. Oops. It's pretty long, but here we go. So we're going to copy the model number. We're going to come back to our main.py file here. When we're calling the model, instead of text wg003, we're just going to call the, our personal funny sentence generator fine tune. Let's just have 50 tokens. That's fine. And let's put a stop sequence because it doesn't want to stop. And since it always wants to write javascript we can actually put that as a stop sequence so whenever it wants to type javascript then it should stop hopefully oh i believe we have to put it like that i'm not sure actually um let me see is there a stop sequence here how do we do this i think do we do it oh we have to do it as a list okay java script here we go this should work get rid of that save it so now when we so we are actually are we unicorn let me see if the server is still running oh okay our server is running so now actually we are using our fine tune okay it wasn't generating anything because of the stop sequence because obviously it's stopping the first generation as well Okay, oh, we'll just leave that one out, save it, and uh, generate. Here we go. So we get a few. JavaScript, because the only thing that can make you laugh is accidentally creating fires in your browser window. JavaScript, because nothing says fun like accidentally running your code. So it's cutting off here because of our token count. So it's important actually to use some kind of a stop word, maybe obvious uh, stop si signal in your in your fine tuning, so you'll know exactly when to stop. Like some kind of a, it could be anything really. It could be dot dot dot. It could be like all uppercase end or something like that. So it'll actually learn that, and then you can use it as a stop sequence. Well, we've actually neglected to do that, but. We can see that it is working. Let me refresh and generate. We can generate as much as we like. Because you can't spell fun without script. That's fine. These are funny writing because the only thing that's guaranteed is nothing because it's the only language where you can write. Because nothing says fun like coding all day only to realize you've made a huge coding mistake and have to undo half the work you just did. So this is pretty cool. So we have fine-tuned the model. We build a quick little web app. We have used our fine-tuned model in the playground. And in the web app, I think this was pretty good. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to be notified of the future videos. And see you in the next one. Take care.